Okay, in that case, we can move on to res next. So res next is borrowing ideas from uh, inception architecture and is trying to make it more uniform. We know that for inception architectures, you are using three by three, five by five, three by one, one by three. Here, you're gonna use only three by three. Then you're gonna use the ideas of group convolutions. This is good when you are parallelizing your model. So there is a question uh, in the chat. So deep means more layer, yes, and wide means more channels, exactly. So you're correct. Any questions about res next? So there is a question about group convolutions. The question is, is it just condensed notation for the other image in B? Exactly. So this panel B of this figure is exactly equivalent to panel C. So that's just a definition of group convolutions. You're gonna do your convolutions in groups, in this case, in 32 groups. This is one group, this is the other group, this is the last group. Why is it useful? Because we also cite AlexNet. They were dividing their convolutions and putting them on two GPUs. It's the same idea here. They had two groups, here you have 32 groups. Does that answer your question? So how many GPUs would you need for a structure like this? You can do this in one GPU. That should be fine. But uh, you can also think of model parallelism. You can put this one on one GPU, these other computations on another GPU, and then you can have 30 GPUs. Or you can put four of them in one GPU, the other four in another GPU, and so on. But by the mere fact that you're using 32 groups, all of these operations can be done in parallel. And at the same time, these are smaller matrices that you can work with. So even on one GPU, this is gonna be a better model because this is heavily parallelizable. Does that your question? I, I think so. Um, so you said that, that um, in ImageNet, they had two groups and fitted on two GPUs, but here you're showing 32 groups and saying that it can be done on one GPU. And I think that's my confusion. Uh, so that's your choice. I mean, if you have 32 GPUs in front of you, you can break the model that way, but then you need to worry about these communications between GPUs. That might slow down your compute. But as soon as you turn them into groups, then you have the flexibility to use only one GPU or two GPUs. It's just for the sake of being more efficient. These are smaller matrices. So the idea is working with smaller matrices. Let it be on one GPU or multiple ones. What I'm saying here is that using groups is not a new idea. We also had it with AlexNet. Okay, does that answer your question? Yeah, that's good, thank you. Yeah, there is another question on the chat. Each of those convolutions in the group convolution take the same input, correct? Yes. So it, they are all gonna be a tensor that, have, that has a height and a width, let's call that H, and W, and then it's gonna have 256 channels. And that's gonna be the same input to all of these convolutions. Okay, any other questions? So res next is a more efficient model. And as soon as you make your model a little bit more efficient, you can scale it up to have the same number of parameters as a more complex model, but then you're gonna get more performance out of it. So now you're seeing some taste of being more efficient in terms of compute and parameters. So group convolutions is an idea of more efficient implementations for convolutions. And it's not a complex idea. It's just basically this figure. Any other questions? Okay, perfect.